This skill focus activity takes a look at capitalization, and it really is going to help students pay attention to and discover and learn and even review capitalization rules because of how we're going to get them to, to notice them in texts that they read. So the whole premise behind this activity is that we turn students into detectives. Where do they find capitalized words in sentences and in passages? And then we get into the why. Why are those words capitalized? They're not randomly capitalized. What's the rule that the writer was following to capitalize those words? So the way that we get started with this is to review with students that there are four rules of capitalization. And that's it. Only four. Seems like there should be about 10,000, right? It seems like there's a tremendous amount of rules regarding which words to capitalize when and not to, but truly it boils down to just four. The first one is really the one that we start teaching from the very first time students pick up a pencil and begin to put their own thoughts down on paper, and that is to capitalize the first word of every sentence. That is a rule that always is in place and needs to be followed and quite frankly is a habit. And so we really want students to develop a very strong habit of knowing that if I have ending punctuation, then the next word that I write needs to have a capital letter. So if you notice students are not capitalizing their first words of the sentences that they write, shorten their writing assignments or writing tasks and really hone in on this is a habit that we have to build. We need to be capitalizing the first word of every sentence that we write. It helps your readers, right? Your readers are going to thank you for that. The second is capitalizing the pronoun I. So anytime we reference ourselves in our writing, we need to make sure that we are capitalizing the word I. This one is also a big habit. Sometimes students really like to put a lowercase i with a heart, right, instead of the dot. Something along those lines where they are in, they're individualizing and personalizing the way that they are crafting that letter. But for standardized academic writing, we really do need the pronoun i capitalized. And that's a big habit for students to get into and to maintain. The third category is really the one that gets tricky, uh, and that's the proper nouns and adjectives. It seems easy enough, but sometimes words are proper and sometimes they're not. And that's where it gets a little bit more um, specific and advanced for students to really master this rule of capitalization. So thanks for Google. We can get on there and, and uh, get a little more help in terms of figuring out if words should be capitalized or not. But then the last one in terms of the four big rules is the first words of quoted text. So if I'm pulling in a full sentence quotation from a source, I need to capitalize that first word. Or if I have dialogue or monologue, if I'm writing a narrative, then I need to have those words capitalized if they're full sentence. So really, that's it, right? Four rules. And teachers, there are resources for you in the teacher guide on pages 18 through 21 in tab three that go through all of the, the um, examples of all of these and specifically proper nouns and adjectives. But what we do have in this skill focus activity are all the categories of proper nouns. And this is where we can say, ah, rule three, yeah, proper nouns and adjectives gets a little bit tricky because of all the categories here. And so one example of this is the word math, right? If I said, I have math after lunch, then I'm referring to the subject, the course of study. And so I would capitalize the word math in that sentence. But if I just said, oh, I love solving math problems, and I'm not going to capitalize that word because it's not a particular course of study. It's a discipline. It's just solving the type of problem, right? So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. The word sun, S-U-N, is another example of this. That's a celestial body. And if I'm putting it in a sentence with other celestial bodies, like if I said um, Earth is the third planet from the sun, then I would capitalize the word sun. But if I just said Plants need uh, sun uh, or light from the sun to grow. Plants need light from the sun to grow. And I'm not going to capitalize the word sun. The caveats of these are where just getting online and Googling or utilizing AI as another source of checking, not a definitive source, but another source of information is very helpful. And of course, the site Grammarly is fantastic. Also asking our devices, right? Our, it's a wonderful way to uh, bring that into the learning and just show students that we don't necessarily have to have all the rules memorized, but we do need to know what resources are available to us and then be able to triangulate that data, right? Check a few different sources. If I use an, uh, an AI generator, if I look on Grammarly, 
and I use my grammar textbook, right? Or I ask my guru, grammar guru uh, uh, of a mom. I ask my list, the, my phone, and then I also um, put it in on a Word document and see if it capitalizes, right? So getting students to triangulate, looking at, at input of whether or not words should be capitalized is going to be really helpful. So let's dive into this activity. How do we get students to start to pay attention to capitalized words and understand why? We are going to just take one sentence at a time. So this shouldn't take a ton of, uh, of, of time. It really is just a quick little check-in. And, um, and, and so we do that one sentence at a time. And students are going to create, uh, excuse me, uh, connecting designs. And this is where um, we'll talk through what this looks like in just a minute, but they're going to explain. And that's really the magic of this activity. It's not so much identifying the capitalized words, although that's step one and very important. Really the, the instruction and the review and even the discovery of learning new capitalization rules um, is going to come through the explanation part, the why part. So all you need is a text. And so in this case, we've got a uh, just a six sentence text uh, here about Legos, which is a pretty fun topic, especially in my household. So um, we want students to go sentence by sentence, day by day. So one sentence per day and find the capitalized words. So here's our first sentence. On average, there are 80 Lego bricks for every person on earth. That's pretty cool. And so we want to scan th th through this sentence and find the capitalized words. So definitely we have on. And where else do we see a word with a capital? The word Lego. So these two are first going to be highlighted. So students would highlight them on their papers. And then we're going to put them into a connecting design. This is one of my favorite designs to use. It's all about seeing connections, right? It's all about Analogies is another uh, kind of way of referencing what we're doing with this. We're making some kind of connection between the information. Um, and so we have two half circles with a line in between. And that line is critically important. It is the connecting link. What connects what's in that first half circle with what's in the second half circle? It's that, it's what's on that line. Okay. So on is capitalized because, and then what are we going to put over there? Why is it capitalized? This is where students would review those four rules of capitalization and just go down the line. Is it the first word of the sentence? Actually, yes it is. That's why it's capitalized, right? It's the first word of the sentence. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That one, by the way, spoiler alert, <laughs> it's going to be on every sentence, right? Um, but that's just a great one to review to the point that they're like, listen, I got it. First word of the sentence, I'm always going to capitalize it. Okay. Good, that's the goal, right? Then the second word, Lego. Lego is capitalized because, and it's easy to say, oh, it's a proper noun. Okay, yes, yes it is. But let's have students go a little bit further. What type of proper noun is it? And so you can give them that chart with all of those um, different types or categories of proper nouns. And in this case, we're going to say it's a specific company. And in this case, it's actually a toy company and even the name of the toy that the company makes. So. We've gotten very specific here of the rules of capitalization that are prompting these two words to be capitalized and getting students to really start to internalize why words and sentences are capitalized. So let's try one more just for practice here. Sentence two, Lego minifigures are the world's largest toy population with over 4 billion of them around the world. That's pretty incredible. So the first word of the sentence, again, is going to be capitalized here, but it's also an and, right? What else is it? And so that's a neat piece of doing this activity as students realize sometimes words can fall into more than one category. And that's great. It's just a double reason to make sure it's capitalized. Um, and so what else? The word minifigures right there together at the beginning of the sentence. But as I look through the rest, nothing else is capitalized. So we're going to repeat the same activity here where we make a connecting design. We put the word Lego in the first one. Lego is capitalized because, well, we know it's the first word of the sentence, but then also it is that specific company name, right? So we've got both of those listed here, which is really important for students to realize that sometimes words fit into more than one category. And then the second word, minifigures. Why is minifigures capitalized? What's the connection um, to the topic? And what category does it fall into if we think it's a proper noun? Uh, and in this case, it is, right? It's a proper noun and it's a specific toy name. 
What's really neat about as you work with students on proper nouns, on identifying those, the word specific is going to come up over and over, um, or I encourage you to make sure that it does, right? That you say it is a specific company, it is a specific toy, it is a specific country, it is a specific language, it's a specific day of the week, right? That word specific is what really clues students into, ah, I need to capitalize this word because it is a specific fill in the blank, right? The word specific is what helps students remember all those proper nouns and adjectives. So back to the idea of the word math, right? If I say I love to solve math problems, that is a type of problems, but it's not a specific one. But if I said I have math class after lunch, then I know specifically the class that I'm talking about. So the, the it's a little bit feels like splitting hair sometimes, but Welcome to the rules of grammar in English, right? Uh, so the this activity continues with many more sentences. You've got the resources here that will pop up that indicate to you what the words or, or what categories um, the words fall into, what rules of capitalization the words are, are related to, to know why they're capitalized. The big goal is that you're getting students to look at those rules to figure out which ones are at play in each of the sentences, and then either to talk this to each other, right? To have a discussion, to read these connecting de designs to each other, or to write them out. There's so much research that the more students use handwriting to put down information that they're learning, the more that they internalize it. And that's a that's a that's a really helpful piece to remember that um, that the more students are writing content in their own words, on paper, with their handwriting, um, the more of that information the, that they are going to retain. Remember, the big piece here is the why. It's that second arch um, in each of these connecting designs. It's fairly easy for students to find the capitalized words, and that is an important step. But we really want to make sure that they are thinking through and adding all of the rules of capitalization that the words fall into um, so that they can practice them. So. Every text that students are reading is a great source to do this skill focus activity. And what it's going to do is start to prompt them to be more careful and curious readers uh, and to think through the rules of capitalization as they are reading text uh, from here on out. So have fun with this. Find text that's part of what students are studying or things that they're interested in and pull those sentences in so that they've got high interest and connection to the text to make this an even more powerful skill focus activity. Happy writing.